Now then, it was only when he heard his eye playing football that Jason Redding's parents discovered he'd kept the secret for years that he was actually going blind. He perfect that eye, but all I see is blurry in the other eye. He's obviously muddled through, like, without, uh, without telling us, up until the point where it was discovered. The retina at the back of Jason's left eye has come adrift, but he never told anyone he couldn't see because he didn't want to go to hospital. Jason's retina has been detached so long and the back of his eye is so crumpled and scarred that there's only a 50-50 chance that Mr Laidlaw will be able to save his sight. We are going to use a laser next and the idea of using the laser is to weld, if you like, I think weld's a good word, the retina into the right position. Working on a microscopic level within Jason's eye, the slightest error could be disastrous. But after some meticulous repair work, it's looking good. This is starting to look like God made it to look like. So, in essence, at this point, I'm very happy. The final step involves filling Jason's eye with glass. We're, we're now putting in some, a, a bubble of glass, of silicon oil, um, into the eye. And that's going to act as a crutch, holding the, the retina in place. Um, hopefully while it heals in place. It's taken all of Mr Laidlaw's skill. We close the eye up now, that's this operation over really. We've got a retina that's sitting in the right place, that isn't folded up. We've got more than half of his retina back in the right position. So that gives him a chance of getting, regaining some useful sight in this eye. First thing is to see whether the retina does stay in the right place because there's a chance of it coming off again and further surgery being needed. If it stays in the right place, then there should be slow um, restoration of some vision. That eye is never going to be perfect, but it should be better than nothing and visually useful. Hello. You all right? Yeah. You're funny. Mm -hmm. Well, now the operation's done. It's glad it's all over. He seems a bit more settled in himself. He's, he said he feels like he's got a hangover, so I don't think he'd be drinking. <laughs> oh, starving. First thing since last night. <laughs> Two weeks later, Jason and his dad are back at St Thomas's to find out if the operation has been a success. From all accounts, it's gone, it's gone pretty well. So I'm yeah, just hoping that uh, it'll be good news today, like. Right, so we did the um, the operation on your left eye, and how do you think it is? It's getting better. In what way? What, more comfortable or vision? More vision. More vision. What about brightness and colour in that eye? Dimmer in that eye. Which the, which the dimmer one? Okay, let's have a look. Look left. The real test is the letter chart. Before the operation, Jason couldn't even read the top line. Let's just uh, pop this on. So, now is the sort of moment of truth. Let's spin you around a bit. If you, if you look up there, can you see any letters on the chart? Can you see any shapes on the chart? No. OK, that's not unreasonable. Um, if I hold that, can you see any letters? N. Right, very good. So that's quite encouraging. So far, I'm delighted. The rest is in the right place, and with the chart, after only two to three weeks following the surgery, you're seeing something. We've got a good chance of, of turning this into an eye that's worth having in vision terms. There's a bit of um, luck involved. And at the moment, luck's saying you're riding your luck well. It was a chance accident on the football pitch that saved Jason's sight. If he hadn't got a stone in his eye, he would never have been diagnosed. At last, he's off the injury bench and back playing the game he loves. And you know what? I reckon it's safe to say that Jason will speak up sooner if he has any more problems in the future. We wish him and his parents the best we'll of luck. Let's see what Alan's getting on with. What's he up to, Alan? Now then, what do you reckon, the new song and dance man? Um, maybe not. Just like my daughter Amelia, I don't do sick very well, um, but I might have to this morning. Uh, Joanna, how are you? 
Um, I'm fine, thank you. You're lying. A bit queasy. <laughs> what, so what, what's the problem then? I've got hyperemesis in pregnancy, which is excessive vomiting. And you've had this for how long now? Uh, about a month. And how are you feeling? A bit sick. Yeah. I've started a new therapy last night, though, which has helped a lot. Does it mean you can eat normally or...? or oh, God, no. <laughs> oh, God, no. <laughs> so no. What, what, what does it mean? Um, I've, I've managed to keep down... Well, I beg your pardon, I've managed to eat three meals in a month, but uh, they don't really stay down. Three meals in a month? Three That's meals, it. yeah. Um, I had half a slice of toast this morning and felt quite good and then had a bit of an exorcist moment in the shower room. Is it getting you down? It doesn't seem like it is. Well, they're taking such good care of me and it's really nice and relaxing and look at the view. Is this, is this your first pregnancy? I've had a miscarriage in the past, but I wasn't this bad when I was pregnant before. And I hope you're getting lots of support. Yes, I am, yeah. So does this actually mean that you have to be in hospital for the whole of your pregnancy or, or what's going to happen? Oh God, I hope not. They haven't, they're very cagey, I must admit. Um, I was admitted a fortnight ago felt really, really well after a day. Thought, yes, they'll send me home, and they kept me in for five days. And now I'm actually quite poorly, and I'm sort of seeing my life stretching away. It's not going to be that bad. It really, it really isn't. <laughs> but I'm reading Harry Potter. Oh, so, so that's, it, it, yeah. I mean, out of bad comes good. Yes. Also, I've got to say, you're wearing probably the, the snazziest socks I've ever seen in my life. They are this year's hot item. These are, these are anti-embolism <laughs> stockings to stop me getting a DVT. So you've got, you've got to wear them all the time, then? Yeah, I can take them off in the shower, but yeah. <laughs> Get yeah. nagged as soon as you come out again. Well, listen, I, I wish you all the luck in the world. Thank um, you. You, you're a fantastic personality, <laughs> and it, it doesn't seem to have depressed you one bit. No. And also, I am so thankful that you haven't been sick whilst you've been talking to me. If you want me. to, I can... <laughs> <laughs> Just in case, I've got the bowls <laughs> everywhere. Thank you very much. <laughs> Nadia, over to you, my darling.